Hi, Richard Spazano here from Digitally Feelers. And today is part six of the powerful toolbar. And I'm going to be talking about the pen tool. The pen tool has so many things on top and they're not somewhat, really not similar to most of the other things on the other toolbars. So I thought this would be an interesting tutorial. And I am going to warn you about something. I pretty much understand these whole sections up on top. But there are a few things near the end I don't understand, and I'm going to try to work them out at the second half of this tutorial. So I will tell you at what point I'm going to be doing that. So if you don't want to watch the end of the tutorial, then you can stop at that point. So if you do watch it and I find I'm doing something wrong or I can't figure it out, please put it in the comments so I can learn and everyone else can learn. So let's get started. So let's start with the basic mode. This is regular pen mode. Pen mode, you can click and then click again. It draws a line. You can click again. You can click and drag to make a curve. It's very simple. But you notice before you click here, there is, there is nothing. You don't know. You have to guess where you're about to click. And then you click, and then you don't know what the curve is going to look like. And so you keep clicking, and then you come back to the beginning. Okay, I'm keeping a stroke on it. If you want, you can always add color. That's entirely up to you, but I'm leaving it without color for now. So that's how you do a basic pen mode. So the next is smart mode. And smart mode shows you where you're about to click. See, I have, I'm holding down the, the left mouse button now. And normally, if I click the mouse, mouse button, it would have already put a line there, but I, now I let go and it holds it there. So I want to know where my next one, if I hold down the mouse button, it makes a curve. It, it kind of knows what I'm looking for and it continues the curve, but um, at least I could see before I let go where it's going to go. So smart mode is kind of giving me a little bit of a preview. So like right now, my mouse is, uh, left mouse is up. I click now, it's down but it's not showing me the line until I start moving and then I let go and then that's how smart mode works. So smart mode kind of makes more of a flow as you go along and it gives you, you know, at least advanced notice. And that also, again, we're putting that on a separate curve. Let's delete all of these right now. And the next one is polygon mode. Polygon mode, there are just no curves. You click, you click, you click, even, and if I try to drag to make a curve, I'm not dragging. I'm, as I'm dragging, holding down the left mouse button, it, instead of making a curve, it's just continuing with my line. Continue, I'm dragging, no curve is happening. So what it's doing is polygon is just all straight corner edges. So that's polygon mode. And then we go to the next one on top is line mode. Let's get rid of we go to line mode, you can only make a line. It, ends, it starts and ends at the line. For example, I'm clicking and I'm clicking. I made a line. If I click somewhere else, it didn't continue that line. It just made another line. You notice it was another layer. No matter where I click again, I made another line. So if I want to make a bunch of lines just like that, I could just keep clicking, clicking, and there's my lines. So that's line mode. Now, let's get rid of all these. The next one stumped me. Let me take that off and put it on regular now. This one kind of stumped me. It was, and then I figured it out. Preserve selection when creating new curves. So if I create any kind of curve, let's say this, am I in line mode? No. There we go, okay. So I create this curve, for example. And that's it. I'm done, right? And then I go to an, I create a new curve and say I want to make sure the new curve hits those exact points. Well, if I create a new curve, I won't know where those points are because those points disappear. So I can't figure out where I want to meet up with any of those things. So let's delete this. But if I'm on this one, and then I click on Preserve Selection. And now I go to a new one. Those points don't disappear. So for example, 
I could keep myself right there and I know exactly where I want to meet. So if I wanted for some reason to do something and I needed them to line up on those exact spots, that's how I would do it. So that's what preserve uh, selection means. So let's try this one. This one says add new curves. So let's do a regular one. Let's get rid of the preserve. Let's, let's just do a normal pen tool. And um, I just created something really pretty and beautiful, another piece of artwork for you to hang on your wall. <laughs> and then if I go to the pen tool, so if I click new curve, I'm going to watch my layer, see how I'm going to start here. And it does not make a new layer. It creates it on the same layer. It's never made a new layer, so it continued the same layer. And so if I filled that, this is what would happen. All right, so that covers add new curve. Next is rubber band mode. So let's, let's just get rid of add new curve. Let's delete all this. Okay, let's talk about the rubber band tool. Let's make sure, make sure all of these are off. You know, some of them go on and then some of them click on and then off. You see how they get a little darker. And so we're gonna do regular mode first. Now regular mode, you click and you click somewhere else. You had, no, you had no idea where that line was going to be except there. So now if I click again and make a curve, and, next, and I move my pen here, you don't know where this curve exactly is going to be until you click. And then you can drag whatever. Now rubber band mode works differently. If you click on rubber band mode, you can keep all of these working. doesn't matter whether you use smart mode, polygon mode, but it's, if you have rubber band mode on, when you click, you see the line before you click again? I'm not clicking, now I click and say I'm dragging. And now watch what happens when I let go of the mouse. I'm not making that line until I click again, so I could decide where I want that curve to be. Rubber band is showing me where it's going to be. So now if I click here, I can do that, I can do that. I know where the next line is going to be because I'm looking at it right now. And I can go like that and then see that curve. And so I got to see the curves in advance with rubber band mode. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's get rid of the one below it. Let's just keep this one going. So, so right here now we have convert. So really convert helps you with the node tool. If I am in the node tool, and then over here you go to convert. If I click this curve right here and I convert it that way, it becomes straight. There's no curve attached to that. If I go the other one, smooth, it's, it smooths it out. And if I go here, smart, well the smooth actually worked on that one, but smart keeps it even smoother. Let me see if I can get an example on smart. If I click this one and I go smart, it knew that from this node to this node, that would be a, a smoother curve for me. There was no reason to go indented like that. So it made a smarter curve so that I can move this around like that in a nicer way. So that's what they are. Let's get back to the pen tool. So that covers the, I'm sorry, wait, wait, that covers that, this section. And then we have actions. So this break tool, I really don't know, I don't understand how to use it with the pen tool, but what I usually do is go to the node tool. And when it's when there's a node tool, see how I'm moving that around? But if I click the same thing, it's up here, break, and then I grab one of them, it's now separate. So it broke that curve. So now if I create another curve, and I do that, and then I select close curve, it closed it up. So that's simple. You didn't have any problem finding it here, but what if, for example, we try another one. What if you created this really complex thing, like really crazy kind of, and it went on and on and on, and there was so many things in there. 
and you didn't know where it was going and there was so much going on at this point and you sat there and you looked at it and go how am I going to close that curve well then all you have to do is close curve and you just did so if you gave it a fill color it's completely closed curve so that's why you would use closed curve okay let's do join curve now if you have you just created this right here that's on one thing one layer and then you create another one on another layer and then you select the two layers oops and you're in the pen tool and you say join curve it now is one layer and then you could say close curve and now it's and now it becomes one curve with one fill so you can take two curves and make it into one and what else is left here uh, join curves we just did all that S smooth curve oh smooth curve let's do smooth curve say you created this curve like that and it really isn't that that great of a curve but you tried and then you click smooth curve it added more nodes sometimes it subtracted sometimes it added it and it smoothed out some of the bumps it's really hard to tell here but there were examples let me try another one if I can uh, I tried a couple of them before I did that and they worked out much better and then I click smooth curve in the end so let's see what we got here and it added more because it, it kind of smoothed it out if you could see it it's more of a smooth transition going on than the bumpy one was so that smooth curve I don't know I don't know how much you would use that but it's there and now reverse is interesting so let's do another one if you go from here to here right and you're out of that and then you come back this is where you would continue from and it continues that whole thing you can't continue anywhere else on there otherwise it might cause another layer but if you undo that and then you come back and you and watch where this color is if you click reverse the red is up here so you can continue from this line instead and if I click reverse again I can continue drawing from this line and I click reverse again I can continue from this line so that's what reverse is and let's go back to pen and now here's the stuff it's a little bit confusing so I'm gonna attempt to it so if you don't want to watch this this is your time to get off of this but it's, I think I've kind of figured most of it out, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's talk about align to nodes of selected curves. So if I'm creating something like this, and then I click, I don't have magnet on at all. So um, I don't have a line snapping on. So if I click align to nodes of selected curves, it's kind of letting me know ahead of time like where I'm going to be aligning to so if I wanted to come down to here and if I want to align with this middle one so it kind of keeps me on track so that's the first part so let's try another one snap to geometry of selected curves I don't get it I don't even know why it would even oh maybe because that's not on that would help no I don't know what it does so if someone can help me with that one I can't figure this out so let's see next is snap all selected nodes when dragging let's try this one so let's do that one. Don't see anything happening. 
I'm dragging, so I don't know what's going on here. Oh, it looks like it's snapping. It looks like it's snapping right to that node right there. So it's still not closed yet, but I could snap to nodes like that. So maybe I can create a geometric pattern that way. So that must be what that is. I don't know. So the next one is a line handle position. So let's take these off and let's see. Nothing. I don't understand this. Why would it do that? It says align handle position using snapping options. So I don't know. Maybe the snapping options on this. We have to have bolt on. So let's try that. Ah, so if we have bolt on, it does. It does the handles could snap to where we want it to be. So for example, I want it to snap to there. I want it to snap to this one. Okay. So you have to have bolt on for that. So I don't know. Like I said, I apologize. And please someone contact me and tell me or someone do a tutorial to show where it should go. So let's try the last one. The last one here on this list is perform construction snapping. So let's start a new layer. Hold on, let me deselect that. And construction snapping. Okay, now I like that. That's giving me my measurements and keeping me in line. For example, If I want to draw something and keep it, that's good. I like that one. So that one I'm, that one I'm finding useful. <laughs> so I'm sorry for the second half. This whole snapping thing has got me a little bit baffled. And maybe there are better uses. Some of it I can't figure out. But if any of you can, please give me an example in the comments. And hopefully I can show the example or you can create your own tutorial. The second half is a little frustrating for me, but that's how we learn and we help each other out. So if you like this tutorial, please click like and subscribe and have a good day.